And now we're coming to the next session. In 2024, retention marketing is key and WhatsApp is leading the way with its 2.5 billion users. That's crazy. So get excited about an interactive session on leveraging WhatsApp as a powerful retention tool. Learn how brands like Estee Lauder or About You are reducing acquisition costs, increasing loyalty, and boosting profitability with founder and CEO of Charles, Andreas Tossing. Give him, please, a big round of applause. So, welcome. Glad that you made it and not yet went for an upper roll, but join me in the session today. Um, yeah, retention channel, we just heard it. So what I'm going to talk about is uh, how you can build effectively a WhatsApp retention channel with millions of active subscribers. You may ask, why is that important? I think you probably heard it a lot today or in today's um, uh, panel already. Uh, most of those brands um, that we meet here pay more and more for customer acquisition. Um, so it's get more and more costly actually to get customers. And I want to talk about what you can do to actually make that investment worse. So how do you keep those customers from not churning, from reactivating them again, from buying with you again? Uh, and I'm going to have three topics for you to talk about. Number one, the relevance of WhatsApp. So why actually WhatsApp? There's lots of other retention channels. Uh, number two, uh, how do you actually start? What's the key ingredients to build up a successful WhatsApp retention channel or machine? And number three, to give you a bit of the outlook, what Meta and WhatsApp is actually planning to build in the future, uh, how this is going to transition from a retention channel at some point into its sales channel. But first, I want to start also with three questions to you, and please all join. So number one, very simple question, and everybody should raise their hand. Who is privately using WhatsApp? That's what I've guessed. Whom of those have actually messaged with a business already in WhatsApp? Oh, quite some, but it's getting few. And whom of you actually is working for a business or having a business that is actually providing a WhatsApp business experience to their customers? Already some. So I hope you can learn something for the others. Let's dive into why. Is this relevant? So as you've just seen, can anybody uses WhatsApp? So that's kind of some, some recent numbers on the penetration. So how many people in Germany and the relevant age group are actually using WhatsApp? There's also other channels and, and uh, um, messenger apps that people use, of course. But due to those networks effect, it's all very much concentrated on WhatsApp. And I often get the question, shouldn't I also use iMessage or Telegram or something else? Yes, of course, you can do that. But with WhatsApp, you probably reach everyone that you need to reach. Another question we always have, like, oh, how does it look actually by country? And we here build a map that shows you a bit how is penetration actually looking like in other countries. So it's not only a German phenomenon that people use WhatsApp. It's also other countries where we see high usage, especially in Southern Europe, Spain, and Italy. We have lots of customers uh, that successfully use it. There's some odd countries in there. So France is a bit less. They actually use a lot Facebook Messenger as well, but we recently had also customers successfully driving the strategies there. And then the UK is a bit lagging behind. It's still a lot of SMS in UK, but also there we see, we see great results. Um, what you can take from that slide is, is if you're a pan-European business, it's not only a German thing you build, it's a channel you can build actually across countries. Only exceptions is Denmark and Sweden. They are really hooked to Facebook Messenger. Uh, but besides that, um, you're gonna, gonna have good experience across those countries. And even if you go beyond Europe and look into Latin America, the usage is even higher on, on Southeast Asia. Now let's talk about what do you need to have to build an exciting retention strategy and excite your customers and also grow, of course, um, hopefully profitable, um, such a channel. Four key ingredients. Number one, usually when we have a new customer, never done WhatsApp marketing before, the big question is, how do actually the people get into my WhatsApp chat? How do I get subscribers? Some business do have phone numbers, but shouldn't be allowed to use them because probably you don't have a WhatsApp-specific opt-in. 
So it's a lot about attracting users, making them actually join your channel. And there's some things we usually do. We have a playbook of different ways how to attract people. There's like different mechanisms you use, but they always need to combine with an incentive. One very common thing is C2W, a click to WhatsApp ads. So if you do an Instagram ad or a Facebook ad, you can swipe up or click and directly WhatsApp opens and you can start a WhatsApp flow uh, and obtain the opt-in of the customers. What works perfectly well is pop-ups. You probably know that from most e-commerce websites that you get a pop-up for uh, registering and getting an email newsletter and get 10% off. You can just do the same with WhatsApp. Many do email on desktop, and then they ask for a WhatsApp opt-in on mobile. You click it, you directly land uh, in the WhatsApp chat. And we see uh, in the median around 1% of website visitors that actually transferring into WhatsApp subscribers. Number three, also many people like to have order updates, not only via email, but also receiving them via WhatsApp. So it's a good way, if you don't want to place it in the checkout on the thank you page, to ask them, hey, do you want to receive your order updates via WhatsApp, opt in here. And we see like 7% seven, 7 um, in average, actually, of the people who order actually also give them their opt-in. Um, of course, you can also leverage your existing followership on social media or your email newsletter and send a campaign or do a campaign there. I'll have an example in a minute. Um, and last but not least, also offline works well. We're now working, for example, with Taco in, in Italy, they also have on the point of sales the option for people to register uh, for, for the WhatsApp newsletter. Now, here one example of Katjes. Um, we launched that with them several months ago. We, we gamified also the experience of something you can do within WhatsApp due to all the quick replies you have. So basically, did, did a raffle um, and asked like how many sweets uh, or gums are actually in the jar. So people were then transferring to WhatsApp, gave their opt-in, um, replied with a number, guessing what the, the right number is. They could win an iPhone. Um, and if the number was wrong, often it was wrong, they could have another trial if they would actually forward that raffle to a friend. Yeah? And so you got a bit of a viral loop also. So it was a good strategy to actually get lots of people subscribed. Number two, segmenting. Very important in WhatsApp. Um, it shouldn't be a, a channel where you just blast the same message to everyone. Um, you should look out because, and we get later to that, WhatsApp on a WhatsApp business API costs money. So you actually want to do a targeted to keep your conversion high. And of course, you want to deliver a personal experience. The key thing to do is actually to combine the WhatsApp number with the email. Email is still the global identifier you have in your shop system, in your CRM. You have lots of information already attached uh, to your customers, and so you should make use of it. So one strategy also we have, and we have different mechanisms to actually stitch together the WhatsApp number, because once the customer enters the WhatsApp chat, you don't know who they are. You only see the number and the WhatsApp name. And now you just ask for the email and make sure you can actually stitch them together and pull all the data you have already on them to build targeted audiences, but also to send out personalized offers, etc. Number three, engage. Of course, at some point, you want to send messages. So now you're well prepared and set up. Uh, the thing that perfectly works well and most people start with um, is sending bulk campaigns. Yeah? So now Black Friday season is coming up. Something basically you can send to your whole audience. Um, or also if you have also product drops, etc., and people say, hey, I'm interested in a certain kind of product, uh, you can do that, and we see great results. But once you do that over a while and you, cannot have, you do not have a running a promotion every time or a new product drop, you also want to get more personalized and basically send campaigns to individual customers based on events. Yeah? It's about sending to the right person the right offer through the right channel at the right time. Yeah? And the right time often consists about events you have on a customer. You do have those events in your shop system, in your CRM system, whether it's an abandoned card, whether it's the last time they purchased, or what actually works perfectly well is also birthday campaigns. Yeah, I probably know that often from email. Uh, here, a company, a customer was Bergmensch, they're an outdoor apparel brand, and they ask for the birthday uh, once the, um, the people subscribe to then send birthday campaigns. And this campaign yields five euro per message they send out. Yeah, and we have other customers, Demologica, Lampenwelt, they see similar results, so you get a high digit one euro amount per message uh, that you actually yield 
uh, from those campaigns. And then number four, of course, uh, always if you want to steer something, you should be able to navigate. And if you want to navigate, you need some points for orientation. And of course, that's read rates, that's conversion rates, but that's also how much revenue actually do with a campaign or flow. Yeah, and we have actually built out three mechanisms to attribute revenue. You know attribution is a science on its own. Number one, very simple, is UTM tracking. Yeah, so you can set up some default UTM parameters in our solution that then always get attached to any CTA that you place in a campaign or any template. Number two, discount codes, WhatsApp 10, but also a possibility to use unique discount codes if you don't want to share a discount code uh, across, uh, across all your customer base. And number three, which we are most proud of, is really now since you have stitched together the email and the WhatsApp number, to identify, oh, I sent to that customer a WhatsApp three days ago, and three days later, actually, the associated email address did a purchase. So you can actually see how much of those purchases you influence. Often it's not one touch point and that one message. It might be also an ad and also an email, but there you can actually see what's kind of the maximum number of revenue I actually influence. Yeah, and basically, what does it yield? So what do I get out of it? How much do I earn? This is our average number. It's a median across all our customers where we actually have that tracking enabled uh, from the first six months of this, of this year. Um, so we have actually 1 euro 90 yeah, that you get with one message. I was like, okay, there's some cost associated to that. There's, of course, cost for the platform provider, for your internal tool, uh, team that you need to account for. But there's also one direct cost, and that's uh, meta fees. Yeah? So meta is earning money that way when you ever ask yourself, actually, how is this WhatsApp app making money? That's the way it is. Uh, so in Germany, you pay around 11 cents for a marketing conversation. Uh, those prices differ by country of the end user um, and by different type of conversations, but the 11 cents is quite almost the maximum you can spend. And that gives you a ROAS of 16. Yeah, and of course, in customer acquisition, you pay have a, have a lot lower ROAS and, and for some good reason, um, but it's quite efficient. Yeah, um, and should be part hands of your of your retention channel mix. Now you say one well, euro ninety. Uh, what's the basket size? Yeah, might be different for a home and living company versus a beauty company. That's true. So you see also here the split across uh, industries. So of course, when the basket size is lower, similar conversion, you will have a different revenue per conversation. Uh, but especially if you are, have high baskets, as in jewelry or in, in home and living, uh, you'll be able much, to make much more out of it. So now, this is what we do today with kind of all the mechanisms and features that WhatsApp offers today. But Mr. Zuckerberg um, also announced business messaging is probably going to be the next major pillar of our business as we work to monetize WhatsApp and Messenger more. You see, like here, the numbers of the growing user base they have being able to monetize, and they've been very cautious with, with monetizing WhatsApp. They tried a bit ads, but pulled back again, and now kind of basically monetize based on privacy, on access to your customers, uh, as just seen before. And they're not stopping where they are just right now. They go to the next level. And I want to show you some features that are coming up, uh, how they actually drive interactivity in WhatsApp. So it's not only more messaging, but in getting also much earlier in the funnel into discovery, but also much more later into the funnel with actually conversion. Here you see a new feature we just actually launched on the weekends where you have a carousel. So you actually can now send also multiple offers and packages to the customer. So you give them much more better browse experience. But that's not where it stops. Something they just recently launched is what they call WhatsApp Flow should have actually been named WhatsApp Forms. So it's basically a mini website builder that is natively in WhatsApp. Yeah? And there's various use cases you can think of, and I brought a couple. So one is actually, if you now want to take an opt-in, you can have multiple fields that customers fill out, give some more explanation on the opt-in, maybe add a drop-down field on what they want to be next informed on. 
if you actually look more for leads, especially on marketplaces, car companies, real estate or whatsoever, you can basically ask kind of, hey, what you're actually looking for. And those things work dynamically. So if you have certain types that are only available on leasing and some are only available on buying, you could actually place on the next page, you could say like, ah, I only show this kind of models or this kind of products to sell. Appointment booking. If you're a big restaurant chain, or even if you go into travel, travel booking, yeah, you can actually say, like, hey, that's the dates I'm looking for, etc. You can actually integrate or would be able to integrate this with your booking platform and only show relevant offers. But also things like customer satisfaction, not only asking for how many stars you want to give us, and then if it's a five, you actually send them a link to a review platform so they give you a good review, uh, but also learning more, putting an input field and asking what's the, what's the feedback about. So lots of things that are coming there um, that enable more and more possibilities and use cases for yourself to actually gather and capture more information about your customers to be even more personalized than target. But the most exciting thing, I believe, is, is the next one to come. It's like shopping end to end. Uh, one of our core beliefs is we saw that sales went from POS into e-commerce into mobile commerce. And the next chapter, we believe, is it actually went into Shep messenger apps. And here you see, example, Coca-Cola, also customers, and it's very traditional as we do it today, sending a marketing messages, and you get a CTA that links to a website where you then can actually make the purchase. Next stop is that you actually have a natively integrated catalog within WhatsApp. Uh, you can browse your products, you can send different products, and actually they can compose a cart. So you're going to have a little cart icon on the top right uh, of your WhatsApp chat and send that cart to um, the business, and the business can then transform that into a cart or an order link. And then the next exciting thing, you can actually pay in WhatsApp. Already available in Brazil, India, and Singapore. It's just a matter of time, maybe months, maybe years. This is actually also arriving in Europe. Um, but you can integrate different payment methods. There's a WhatsApp pay functionality and even a wallet. Um, so there's no need to actually leave WhatsApp as an app anymore if you want to make a purchase. And last but not least, also possible today, of course, you combine that with after-sales service. So for your customers, it's really the single point of interaction that they're going to have in the future to solve all the use cases from marketing over to sales to after-sales service. Yeah, I hope that gave you some idea and maybe some more ideas what you're planning in the coming Black Friday and Cyber Monday week season. If you want to learn more, come to our booth over in the other hall. Meet us there, happy to go into some of our customer success cases, what could fit for you. Tomorrow there's a masterclass with Jack Swolfskin, um, telling a bit about their experience. And also ask you if you want to play around a bit, scan this QR code, because there you're going to see some of those features. And we're also going to update you about any new features WhatsApp is going to launch, of course, via WhatsApp. Um, so you're able to, to, to play around and uh, find out how this actually works. Thank you for your attention, and have a nice conference.